Hello and welcome back everyone to the Powder Toy and today we're looking at the cargo ship by Anthemayan? Anthemayan? Somethinging. Somethinging. Something like that. Thank you for making this map. It's awesome looking. Look at this thing. This is one of the most beautiful maps I've seen in a while. Alright, so I'm thinking that colloids and graphene together should be incredibly effective at containing things. Let's go ahead and do a little bit of a plutonium uh, nuclear test here. Okay. Okay. That was literally a sizable nuclear bomb you just experienced there. That was, that was a large nuclear blast. <laughs> Ooh, and the graphene is actually failing. It held for so long though. It held for so long. That makes me wonder if I just like go ahead and do this in a little bit more of a stylish way. And then there's one other thing I'm going to do. I'm going to surround this entire thing with insulation. All right, and I'm actually going to make this a little bit thinner, too. Give it a little bit more of an explosive in the center, a little bit less defense through graphene. We're going to make this a little bit more fair. All right, so now we have a system that can super quickly pick up heat from that center uh, reaction and shove it all to all of these cooling systems. Now, the more cooling systems there are the less heat can actually be picked up because the graphene is way better at picking up the heat than the freeze powder, but the freeze powder is actively cooling. So the question is, is it more important to be able to sink all that heat just somewhere in the beginning of the reaction, or is it more important to slowly chip away at it with cold? There's a balance here and I, I don't know what the balance is. All right, so let's go ahead and see if we create a reaction. What happens? It looks like this time we are getting still 2,000 degrees, 3,000 degrees. Oh, wait. Okay, it's breaching, and now it's burning through that insulation. Okay. Actually, the insulation isn't burning yet. Oh, you know what? This other layer may actually be doing way more, way more work than I thought. As long as there's no gap of air, that insulation actually won't burn. Now it's burning, and now this graphene here is getting hot. There's plasma all over the place because the freeze powder is hitting insane temperatures. The water vapor is literally just going whole fusion mode. But it contained it. Barely. I mean, literally barely, and the amount of heat still contained within this is insane. There's just 5,000 degree molten graphene in here, just waiting to escape. I'm waiting because this is now at 9,000 degrees down here because it formed uranium. And that uranium is under super high pressure because uh, the way that graphene works is it holds pressure. No! Oh, yeah, that, that uranium being held in is a huge problem. Um, I didn't even consider that. The uranium, when the plutonium reacts and we get uranium out of it, that uranium in the powder toy heats up super quickly when it's under pressure, especially a lot of pressure. So for holding all that pressure and it's a huge problem. So we have now, I don't know if this is cheating, but because we can hold pressure inside a graphene, instead of having cold or hot in here, why don't we just have a vacuum? Like a really strong vacuum in these gaps. That way, when it breaks open, the uranium won't be able to react because there's just gonna be a super negative pressure. Now the question is if the nuclear explosion will create more positive pressure than this superly low pressure that I'm creating. And look, I'm actually breaking some of this tungsten by doing this, so I gotta be a little bit careful. Careful, yeah, I'm breaking a lot of the tungsten actually. Whoops, it's fine though. 
It's fine, I'm sure it's fine. Okay. Now, I need to make this a normal pressure, where it's cheating, the center at least. Okay, and now let's see what happens. So, I'm actually going to switch over to the pressure display, because I'm curious what will happen. So we get this, this super high pressure, 150 pressure zone here, but it's surrounded by these negative pressure zones, and when this breaks through, which is going to happen any moment now, we can already see this is melting. When this breaks through, is that negative pressure going to... First off, it's going to suck everything in. Yeah, it's, it's sucking everything in, which is not great, because now we're getting the material closer to the outside. But the pressure in here is still negative. We've still got negative pressure right here. And that negative, it's now positive pressure, but it's not very high. It's at, oh, and now it broke into another one of these sections. So that negative pressure is spreading in and it's gotten the pressure in here down to 14. Is it gonna break into another chamber? No isn't but we actually managed to lower the pressure by quite a bit which as a long-term strategy may actually be effective the question is though are we capable of dealing with the heat and the pressure oh and after a few seconds it drops as well okay so we gotta grab the vacuum and just do it a bit more How is the pressure leaking through this? Oh, it's got to be because the uh, it's not four thick. But you can have negative pressure on something and also have a material. So we can actually have this do both. We can have it full of freeze powder and negative pressure. And then I think the combination of those two will actually make this extremely effective. Let's experiment. All right. We've got our reaction taking place, which I will speed up a little bit. All right. So first few seconds have passed. Now the pressure is... The pressure is very high. In any second now, it's going to break into one of these chambers or two. Okay, it's broken into here. That's fine and now it's broken into here, the pressure is still negative, and it's continuing to be negative, and actually it's pulling it away from the wall. Interesting. It's keeping it kind of in this ring where that negative pressure was, and it's still negative, and is it going to balance out with the center? That center positive pressure is decreasing. It is, and it's negative. We've got negative pressure all around. And now it's 6,000 degrees. But it just broke into these two sections as well. And it's getting sucked in. It's getting sucked in. It's getting sucked in. Little bits are flying out. But, oh man, it, it hit the ship. But look at how it's actually holding in a majority of the damage. Oh man, if it wasn't so hot. I mean, the heat is still a problem, but it's holding it in. It's actually, it's doing a fantastic job of holding in the bomb. And the freeze, the freeze powder is actually trying its best to cool this down at this point. It is, it is working as hard as physically possible to try to cool this down. And it's getting close to the point where it's not hot enough to melt graphene anymore. So I think it's actually going to solidify like this. I think... I think this is actually somewhat effective. I've never thought of using vacuum as a defensive uh, capability before, but oh well, yeah, the ship just exploded in nuclear fashion. But the actual bomb has been mostly contained. Uh, this this is not a terrible outcome. It's not terrible. Uh, can we get it the rest of the way? 
Can we get it the rest of the way? That is the question. I think we can. I think if after that tungsten... If after that tungsten we give it another... layer... This is getting rather large at this point, so let me know in the comments if this is just cheating at this point. <laughs> but uh, let's go ahead and see what happens if we just give it a little bit more. Just a little bit more capability. I think just copying what we're doing just one more time, giving it a third level of defense and just a little bit more cooling power. I think this negative pressure technique is going to pay off. All right, so we have leakage, it hits here, it's going to hit this insulation, which is really going to slow it down. It's going to give it time to break the rest of these pressure containers. And that's what we want. Oh, the heat is going, it's so close to the ship that the heat is actually transferring to the ship. Whoopsies. Ah, the ship is causing problems now. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez, oh, jeez fix this okay so yeah again negative pressure in here and this time the additional cooling and graphene has succeeded and this uranium is at a negative pressure so it's not heating up even though it was left behind I mean sure we have the uh, tungsten here which is just glowing at this point because it's so hot but it succeeded it, it actually succeeded in containing oh no i can't go back any further are you serious oh no my face went oh i've got half of it but then i'm gonna have to redo the pressure and stuff you know what we learned we learned a lot so I think I'm going to end it here, but in the future, negative pressure being contained within like little sections of your bomb defenses can be effective. It can actually disarm uranium quite effectively. Uh, materials that create a negative pressure, maybe I should add a powder that does that. Not a, I know there's a solid thing that does that, but if I added a powder that like slowly created a, or a liquid that slowly created a vacuum, that would be pretty neat. That would be pretty neat, wouldn't it? It would have some interesting uses, but also have some really interesting ways it acts. So keep that in mind, and I'll see you all next time. Bye!